Hello and welcome. As the world moves from linear devices to connected devices, to talk about how the global landscape for audience measurement is changing, we're joined now by the Chief Executive and Chairman of Nielsen, David Kenny. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us at the India Today studios here in Glad Rutgers. to be with you. Thank you. Can you start by giving our viewers a sense of the big trends you're most keenly watching out for in the world of audience measurement this year? Well, certainly what we're trying to do is move away from measuring devices, the, measuring the TV screen, the phone screen, the tablet. This is the, it's all the same person. So we're moving from machine-based measurement to people-based measurement, which means we're really respecting and measuring time. Where does the consumer spend her whole day? And then how much of it is on which screen? And what exactly is she watching at, at each moment in time? So it's a, it's a big change, I think an exciting one, very respectful of the fact that the consumer is now in charge of her own experience. So give us a sense of how you're hoping to bring all these devices together and link it back to the same individual and what impact this has on the way the media industry is running. So first of all, we have more data than ever before. Televisions are connected to the internet. Of course, the phones are connected to the networks. Um, the uh, the set-top boxes from the cable companies can give us return path data. So we have many, many data sources that can give us a starting point. There's still a lot of error in that data. There's still a chance of double counting and, and reconciliation to the same person is hard. So we use also a, an actual panel of people we know who agree to give us their data. And we put the two together to get to weighted uh, in a country like India, which is very heterogeneous, weighted in each region, weighted by demographics, to get to a true view of what the audience is doing. Uh, but it's, uh, it's been a great effort to reconcile. The other advantage we have in measurement, because we're not act we don't allow anything to be used for targeting, we um, can use data without violating privacy, because we only need enough data to reconcile it's the same individual. We don't need to know the individual. We don't track them in any permanent way. So this is very unique for us to, especially in a privacy-centric uh, world, which I think more and more governments are concerned about, measurement becomes more important because we can do it privacy-friendly. Okay, so and what are your plans for bringing this service to India? So we've been talking to uh, many players in Indi India, to the to the networks, to the advertisers, agencies. You have an organization called Bark, which measures um, the linear side. We, we've already been measuring digital with Nielsen's digital ad ratings. We've been talking about how these things can all come together. Um, of course, there needs to be agreement. Nielsen can't do it unilaterally. But I think as we're showing everyone a way to do this with integrity and transparency that builds the trust union in the market, we're getting some enthusiasm. So it's certainly a big project for us this year to continue to focus on India and bring people together. So how aligned is the marketplace for the idea that there must be one connected measurement linking back to an individual and not based on which device you're consuming the content on? So for, I would say from the buyers, from the advertisers um, and the agencies, they're very aligned. And, uh, and they're aligned globally with the World Federation of Advertisers. They're, um, they're aligned with the big global companies that this is important because ultimately they're trying to reach people. For the people in the media sector, I think there was intellectual agreement. Of course, the business model can change because when you're measuring it together, you're broadening the pie. And, uh, and I think you know, people will want to work through this in a very transparent way. Um, I was really impressed by some of the government officials I saw, and your, your Ministry for Information and Broadcasting is really, I think, very thoughtful about this. So I, I find the movement is um, in the right direction in India, and in some ways, the enormous advances in India of technology, the growth of the mobile networks has, has made it uh, even more important. But I think it, we, we still need to work together on the details. The integrity of the data collection and dissemination is a critical issue in India as it is Absolutely. elsewhere. How do you view a lot of these charges which come out from civil society and elsewhere that to some extent ratings are meaningless because many stations with a lot of money are actually fixing the ratings to their advantage? So I don't know enough to comment today. What I would say is the problem you describe is solvable. This is what something Nielsen does around the world. Um, because there's a lot of things you have to do about uh, keeping panelists uh, secret, not publishing information. There's a lot we need to do with cybersecurity. 
um, to make this work. It is a currency. It is a, is a financial instrument. And so we apply to Nielsen a lot of the tools that we learn from banking. In fact, we have a lot of people who come to us from banks who understand all the compliance things you do in the financial system. We need a similar structure that is transparent and accountable and auditable in ratings. So there is the idea that panels should be kept secret, then there is human greed. And often human greed ensures that panels ultimately don't remain secret. How do you try and ensure that? My business is to, is to protect integrity. I think you, you have to do this. You have human greed in the banking system too and you still manage to protect accounts. So um, and there's a lot of money in banks. So to me, um, I think what is important is to have the standards you would have on a financial currency on a media currency. A lot of uh, media operations are still uh, platform-based. Television being sold separately, digital being sold separately, print still being sold separately. As the measurement currency is integrated into one, do you think that the only way forward is integration even on the business side? Yes, but I think it's by form. I think you, you should integrate video, integrate audio, integrate display and print. Um, it is a different form, print and social, than, than video. It's a, different, it's a different engagement. I think it would be hard to put those together. Video and audio you can do by time and engagement. Print's a different way of measuring. So I, I don't think it's exactly one thing. They should be more interoperable. But for now, we are focused on um, one video platform, one audio platform, and one print and display and platform. And what are the big trends that you're picking up in... Uh, consumption when it comes to viewers consuming the kind of content that they are what are the changes that you're noticing entertainment is increasingly being viewed on demand if people want to have control of their schedule which means that sports and live news live events are emerging as uh, the one place left to bring large populations together so um, and those are still being watched on a schedule um, in news of course it matters if it's breaking and exciting news versus you know at this format, but it's uh, um, it's all working to make the live events more and more valuable, and and continue to be watched on linear. the The rest of it on demand, I would say it's it's more fragmented, which is why we need a single measurement to add it all together. Since the OTT platforms have disrupted uh, content in such a significant way in India and to some extent abroad, it's led to a crisis of confidence amongst uh, Bollywood film producers, for example, who simply don't see the kind of films that worked in the past working in the post-pandemic period. What are the strategic suggestions that you would have for content producers? So we, we, um, we do a lot with content producers and with studios in, in Bollywood and Hollywood um, and places like that around the world. I think it is. In, I think that the producers of content are going to have to understand the audience better than ever before. Um, so they're getting more insights because the audiences are more heterogeneous. So you need to find your audience as opposed to just getting it on the linear schedule or in the theater, number one. I think secondly, you need to do a better job of helping it be discovered. So we have a second business within Nielsen called Grace Note, which is to tag every movie and every episode of a TV series so that it's more easy. It's like a UPC code in, in package goods. It makes it easier to find that content. And we're spending a lot of time with studios on how you market in an OTT world to get discovered, to be rising up in the recommendation engine, to um, make sure once people have watched some of your episodes that they get recommended other episodes or other shows like that. Um, this is very different than the way uh, films have been marketed in the past, but we think it's a great service to the studio, but also to the consumer, because the consumer is also exhausted. There's so many choices. There's so much content. These libraries are enormous. Um, so organizing those libraries to help her find content she loves is key. We're seeing in the U.S. a raging fight between uh, OTT platforms like Amazon and measurement companies. Well, a lot of these platforms think we can do our own measurement. We don't need somebody from the outside because all the data that's required is actually available in-house. But it's not true. So we... we um, we do measure most of the platforms. We measure Thursday Night Football on Amazon Prime was important to be measured by us because it's seen on the streaming platform and it's delivered by local broadcast and it's delivered um, by satellite to hotels and bars and restaurants. We needed to reconcile that. It needed to happen, number one. And number two, everyone's data is only their own. So why does Netflix use Nielsen? Why does YouTube use Nielsen? Because they need to know what people are watching when they're not watching them. 
I think this is what's, I, back to the trend, this is what everyone's figuring out in 2023. We had a lot of growth in OTT. It doesn't go forever. At the end of the day, there's only 7 billion people on, in the world. There's only 24 hours a day. The population is growing about 0.1%. 24 hours hasn't moved at all. So it's fixed. <laughs> and therefore, you're competing for share. When you're competing for share, the more you know about your share and someone else's share is how you compete to gain more share. You have to have an ominous view. Nielsen's invested to be the market leader in the world so people know what people are watching when they're not watching you. We're the only place to get that data. We had Sir Martin Sorrell sit where you are yeah. yesterday. And the point that he was making was his sense is that uh, artificial intelligence will disrupt and make redundant media planning companies as they exist at this moment. What are the trends that you're picking up and do you see a lot of technologies disrupting uh, a lot of the way in which the sector has functioned so far? So Martin and I used to be in the same business. Mm -hmm. we, um, I was at Publicis, he was at WPP, so I respect him. But And I, then I ran IBM Watson, so I, I would say AI has some value. To say it's going to make it redundant I think is an extreme. Um, I think there are a number of functions that can be automated. Um, just as years ago, you saw the rise of um, discount brokerages and the Charles Schwab's of the world displaced traditional, but traditional then reinvented itself. And, Sch and Schwab reinvented itself. I think the media planners and buyers are reinventing themselves. They're being more strategic. They're being more thoughtful about the audience. Some of the manual work, yes, it can be done by machine. It can be automated. But you... But AI only knows what you teach it. You still need human creativity. You still need to think outside the box. I think it's a very exciting time because I think some of the boring work can be handed to the robot and the planners and buyers can do really interesting work. And in the manner in which companies are spending their ad dollars, what are the things that you're looking out for most carefully this year? What are the trends that you're picking up? Well, of course, there is a global recession. There's an energy problem. There's a war in Europe. Um, this is causing people to be cautious. Some are being so cautious that they're really just doing promotion and not so much brand building. I worry about this because the economy does have cycles and the growth will happen again. So certainly we see that. People are being more thoughtful about countries. India is really interesting to people because it's the fastest growing country and it's an enormous population. So global brands are focused on it and that you know creates more demand, um, which is exciting. Um, I think thirdly, because so much of the content is streaming. Um, people are really eager in the advertising world, at least, to be sure that we get to a single measure by audience so they can find the people in all of that noise. Interesting. Thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best. I enjoyed this conversation. And let's see how Nielsen One shapes up in India in the months to come. Thank you very much. Thank Rahul. you very much. All the very best. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, Nielsen.